Steve Gamash here with another episode of Chef Knives to Go Quick Look Product Reviews, and this time we are looking at the Zakuri Blue Number no. One Petty 150 millimeter knife. This line of knives has a core steel. It's a three-layer sandwich, and the core steel is Aogami or Blue Paper Number no. One, which is a little unusual. Uh, most uh, knives you see are Blue Number no. Two, so a little little different. And this is a reactive uh, high carbon steel from Hitachi. The heat treat's not specified, but it's probably going to be in the 6061, possibly 62 range. The construction is a soft iron cladding on either side of that core steel for a three layer sandwich, and it does go over the top, it looks like. Um, it's kind of a sandblasted finish on the blade road, and then a Kuda Uchi or uh, protective blacksmith finish on that with this kind of a shiny. Uh, fairly smooth but shiny finish to it and this does also have a lacquer coating over the top of all that for protection. The lacquer coating will wear off over time or you can, it is food safe, but you can also choose to take it off with some acetone or something if you wish. The construction, we talked about that. The weight is about two and a half ounces, 71 grams. Edge length about this particular sample, these will vary just a little bit from knife to knife because they are handmade, but this one from tip to chin is about 152 or 6 inches. Overall length about 290 millimeter, and the spine thickness of this one is about 2.75 millimeters coming up out of the handle above the back of the blade here. Um, and then it uh, pretty much holds, goes a little thinner than holds that until you hit the grind where it thins down towards the tip. And the tip gets pretty thin right at the end there. The uh, blade height is uh, fairly short. Uh, it's a 28.7 millimeter. So you can see the shape on this. It's got a very pointy uh, tip and uh, very good for detail work. It's I wouldn't classify it as kind of a mini Guto style. It's a little shorter for that, but more of a utility style. But uh, really cool blade. Um, the handle is just a basic kind of no frills D. It says rosewood. This is an awful light for a rosewood, but it's kind of a nice uh, wood grain handle. Let's take a close up look while we're at it here. It's a it's a really attractive wood grain handle on this and. Um, the uh, it is D-shaped, but I as a lefty I don't really have any problems with D-shaped handles, um, especially if you pinch grip. You really don't feel that part of the handle anyway. The uh, ferrule is a resin or plastic ferrule. There is a bit of a step between the wood and the ferrule, but that's really common for all this style of knives. Um, but the the handle wood itself is pretty nice looking. Um, you've got a bit of a curve to the choil between the back of the blade into the neck, and little bit of relief there on some shaping as well as a little bit on the spine so it's pretty comfortable out of the box you can see the finish on it it's a uh, kind of a matte but fairly shiny uh, KU finish part of that is just the lacquer on top of that um, once you pull the lacquer off it could be more of a matte finish but there's your core steel showing at the edge very easily and uh, out of the box I had to give it a 4 out of 10 it, you could use some cleanup um, I went ahead and sharpened it and uh, it really wants to get sharp. It's a nice sharpening steel. And uh, like I said, the out-of-the-box edge is okay, but this is a good knife if you want to buy something to practice with. These are nice from that. At this price point, you sometimes see some anomalies in the grind. It's not that unusual with the lower price point knife. Uh, this is a good example, if I can kind of get, the, get in to show this here. But right in here we've got an, what I call or what's known as an overgrind where the steel is ground down further into the face of the blade uh, or the, the blade flat, or I should say uh, blade road here. And so you'll kind of see that. So that's ground further down. It's not a bump, it's a depression. So we call that an overgrind. If it was a bump, we call it an undergrind. Um, so you can sometimes get that when you go to flatten the blade road. If you're thinning, you'll have to uh, just deal with that, either leave that there or thin it more to get past that. Uh, this one's not too bad. Sometimes if they're real bad, they can affect the edge itself and what the edge looks like, but this one's not too bad. But you might see some minor anomalies like that in lower-priced uh, handmade knives like this versus the more expensive ones. They spend more time on the grind on those. So here's your um, stamped Zakuri and some kanji on there. So it's an attractive blade. Performance is quite good. It wedges a little bit because um, it's pretty short, uh, meaning not tall, and so you've kind of compressed your geometry, so uh, you don't have a lot of room there um, to get to the thickness of the spine. So it tends to wedge a little bit at the back of the blade, but the tip is really nice and goes nicely through products. So it's a pretty cool blade. And again, uh, let's say balance point, it's... Gonna be right about there. Let's look at it on our board real quick. Let's 
So it's fairly flat. Uh, you're not going to get high on this because the tip's going to dig in, but it's kind of a low drop tip on there. But a little bit of a flat towards the rear. It's pretty pleasant on a low rock, or you can do some push-pull cuts with a little bit of motion to it. So it's a really cool petty. So there you have a you know, fairly low cost uh, with a nice handle, um, entry-level style uh, 150 Petty, uh, that's a Kudauchi finish, hand hammered. The Zakuti Blue Number One Petty 150 millimeter.